Today I'm gonna to show you three super easy ways to create a watermark in Photoshop using a logo that you already have or just creating one from scratch. I'll also be sharing how to create your very own watermark Photoshop action so that all of this can be automated and you can add your watermarks with one click. So let's get into Photoshop and get started. Now, unfortunately in Photoshop, there isn't a way to batch export images with a watermark like there is in Lightroom. Instead, you need to manually go and add it onto your photo. Now, before you do that, you need to make sure that your logo or your watermark is set as a PNG file with a transparent background, and most logos will already be like that. However, if your logo does not have a transparent background yet, I'm gonna quickly show you how to remove it. If you already have a logo or signature with a transparent background, just go and skip ahead in the chapters below to get to the next part of the tutorial. In this case, I have my logo, which I want to be my watermark on a white background, and I can quickly remove it by using the magic wand tool. By going to the quick selection tool and then down to the magic wand tool, I'll set my sample size to three by three average. I'll then uncheck contiguous, make sure anti-alias is checked on, and I'll have my tolerance set to 32. I'll then click on the white background like so, and it will automatically select all of the white areas in my photo. If you have white areas in your logo that are being selected, but you would like to keep, then just make sure that contiguous is checked on, and that way only the background will be selected and nothing within your logo. Now, once your background is selected, all you have to do is click on the layer mask icon, then press command or control I to invert that mask. Now your logo is left on a transparent background and you just need to export it as a PNG so that you can use this image later on as a watermark. To do that, just go up to file, save a copy, choose your destination folder, and then just call this to watermark. Now set the format to PNG and click save. Now you're ready to go and add your watermark to your photo. You can do that by locating your PNG file on your computer that you might have just created like I did, and you can just click and drag that over onto your canvas like so. From there, you can scale your logo as needed and position it anywhere within your photo. Once you're happy with the position, you can also change the opacity of the logo to make it slightly less visible by clicking on the opacity slider in the layers panel and then just dragging that down to make it a little bit more blended into the image. Now for most watermarks that are just in the corner of an image, the whole point is to not have them super obvious, but they're still there to protect your photos. So having a lower opacity helps to keep your watermark on your image without taking away from the photo itself. So I like to keep it around 10%, 10 to 20% usually works good for me. Now, what if you didn't want to add a logo watermark and instead you wanted to have more of a proofing watermark that goes across the entire photo? Well, instead you're going to need to do something a little bit different to make that happen. What we'll do first is create a new text layer and then we're going to save that as a watermarking file to use later on. Let me show you how that works. I'm going to quickly delete my watermark layer here and we're going to start fresh. This time I'm going to grab my type tool by pressing T and then I'm going to click on my image. Now I'm just going to type watermark to create the basic text. From there, I can grab my move tool by pressing V and scale up that text to a size that's more fitting for my photo. I might also rotate the text just a little bit like so, so it can stretch across the entire image at once. You wanna make sure that your text isn't being cut off by the edges of your photo, so it's gonna fit within the entire image like so. Now what we'll do is set an opacity amount that we're happy with. So I'm gonna to go to my opacity and just bring this down a bit like so to make it blend a little bit better in the photo because most proofing watermarks are kind of like this. They're blended in so that they're there. You can still see the photo, but no one would ever dream of taking this from you because it has words all over it. Now you could go and duplicate this text in other areas, add some up here or down below if you'd like. But once you're happy with the look of your watermark effect, we're gonna export this as an individual file. The easiest way to do that is just duplicating this layer to a new document. Clicking on that text layer, we'll go to layer, then down here to duplicate layer, and then we'll set the document type to new. Click OK. Now that text layer is on a new document and we can save this as a PNG file to use later that we can drag and drop into our images. So we can once again go to file, save a copy, and then set the format to PNG. I'll call this to proofing watermark and then click save. Now, once again, just like before, you can just drag and drop that image into place on any of the photos that you're working on. However, we can take this one step further and automate this process by creating a Photoshop action. So then that way, all you have to do is press one button and then your desired watermark will be added onto your image. It's super easy to do and it will save you a ton of time. So over here, back on my photo, I'm gonna delete this layer and we're gonna create a Photoshop action. And if you're not familiar with Photoshop actions, it's essentially a recording of steps in Photoshop that allow you to 
do a specific task. In this case, adding a watermark to the image. And to create a new action, you just have to open the actions panel, which is often found right here. But if you don't see it, just go up to window and down here to actions. Now within the actions panel, we want to create a new folder and I'll call this to watermark actions and click okay. Now within that new action set, we're going to click on the new action icon and then we'll call this to logo watermark and click record. Now all of the steps that we're about to do will be recorded and added into our action. Now, before you do anything, you need to make sure that the logo that you're gonna be using as your watermark is gonna be saved in a location that will always be the same. You're not going to move it from your desktop to another folder, to an external hard drive or anything like that. For this action to work, you need to make sure that that logo file or that watermark file will always be in the same location. Once you have that all figured out, it's pretty straightforward. To start, we'll just go to file, and down here to place embedded. Then we'll choose our desired watermark. In this case, my watermark PNG, or you could do the proofing watermark that we just created as well. Then we'll click place. That's going to add your logo into your photo. From there, I'm going to change the width and height of my logo to 75%, just to make it a little bit smaller. I'll then press the check mark to save those changes. Then I want to have the opacity a little bit lower, so what I'll do is press one through nine on my keyboard to change the opacity. Since I want it to be 20% opacity, I'm going to click on my watermark layer and press two on my keyboard to change that opacity amount. Once that's complete, I'll just press stop on my action. Now what this essentially will do is add our logo onto our image with a lowered opacity, just as you see here. From there, we'll be able to reposition it into our desired location, and it just saves us a few steps in the process. Let me delete this watermark layer to show you how it works. Say I'm starting fresh on a project and I wanted to go and add a watermark to the photo. I'll click on my logo watermark action and click play. Notice how it automatically adds that watermark to my image at the desired size and opacity that we were looking for before. And now I can just reposition it wherever I'd like and the job is done. Now this just makes life a lot easier when you're dealing with a bunch of photos that you're trying to watermark at the same time. And if you're not a Lightroom user where you can just batch export watermarks on your photos. So those are the different ways to add watermarks on your image. And I hope you create an action for yourself because I know that it makes a big difference for me and I think it will for you as well. If you're looking for other ways to add watermarks, I really suggest that you look at exporting watermarks from Lightroom as the process is quite a bit easier. And I wrote all about it over on my website and I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. Anyways, my name's Brendan from Be Will Creative and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.